how things proceed with Canada and the United States and the extradition and what happens with her in terms of getting a trade deal done with China, Jeff. Well, hi, Contessa. Thanks. It's a great question. I think well, there are some different categories of voices that we've heard on CNBC today. There are the China cheerleaders, like my colleague Stephen Roach, who, who really thinks that a lot of times we try to blame whatever goes wrong in the U.S. on China, and he has a little bit of a point there. The China optimists, of course, like Jamie Dimon, who you had on from, from the, uh, the interviews yesterday, the Business Roundtable, Steve Mnuchin's in that group. So you have the, the, the cheerleaders, you have the optimists who think that maybe this won't affect trade issues. Then you have Larry Kudlow, who I think is much more of a trade uh, realist, and I think most old China hands are in that category. I put myself in that group. And the China cynics like uh, uh, Peter Navarro or, uh, or Jim Chanos, who raise very good cautions. And we have these voices that are all looking at the same data, interpreting it differently. This is. This is a, a huge issue, and it's not going to be separate from the trade talks. Huawei as a company is a great national resource to China. It's very much celebrated, but it's a very controversial company. And they have, uh, they have violated uh, certainly non-proliferation and sanctions issues in the past. Like ZTE, they've been warned. And in this case, it looks like not just sanctions violations, but actual bank fraud, pretending to create a, you know, a separate company that was a, a foil. That so that banks could put could could put technology and money into North Korea and Iran in particular, and that that's a big problem. Jeff, uh, looking for a positive in all of this, uh, are you pleased to see Canada and the U.S. working together on what is quite a controversial issue? Do you know, well, I was just saying that to somebody in the car that nobody has brought that up today, and good for you. There is a positive, and in fact, if we don't follow through. You know, with all the ways we've slapped around Canada, and look how they stand by us on this, our allies are united on this front in terms of enforcing these kinds of sanctions. If we don't follow through, we lose credibility, just like with ZTE, with egregious, egregious non-proliferation violations. We slapped them on the wrist, or a couple of billion dollars of fine last year, and then this spring, we had tough sanctions we were going to refuse business with them, and suspiciously that dropped away. Some. Some uh, suggested it's because a half a billion dollars of loans went into an Indonesian project uh, that the Trump Organization had funded uh, that uh, came from China. But 72 hours later, suddenly we let ZTE off the hook, and, and, our, and our partners, like Canada, were very confused, not to mention in the U.S. So that's a great point. Good for Canada for standing by us. Jeff, uh, just finally, if you were Tim Cook, would you go on a journey to China right now? You know, uh, it, it, today I've, it, I've talked to quite a number of CEOs and literally half of them are quite worried. They look at Carlos Ghosn and what seems to be somewhat trumped up charges in what's happened to him in Japan. We saw China before had taken four Rio Tinto executives who got fired where there were never any charges that even Rio Tinto could find of malpractice. One of them just got released from prison. But this was eight years ago they were imprisoned, these Rio Tinto executives, for supposedly uh, the technology transfer. It's a, I have to tell you, it's a dangerous time to travel. We're cutting back, at least I'm cutting back on, on my own into certain places right now. But we have weakened leaders in both countries, which is also troubling. Xi Jinping is not as strong this year as he was last year, and same with President Trump.